Hiya! So welcome back. Uh, so remember we were talking about, uh, in the last video we were talking about the normal distribution. So we talked about this curve. So this curve we gave this formula, y is equal to 1 over sigma times the square root of 2 pi times e to the minus 1 half x minus mu squared over sigma squared where mu is our expected value, sigma is our standard deviation, and the one over sigma two square root of two pi allows this curve to have area one. And we basically said that the normal distribution is going to be the areas of certain intervals under our curve, right? So we need some box little things, right? Uh, and so we have a certain distribution. Um, what we're going to do is we're actually going to look at this function in a slightly different way. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to look at the normal distribution through a cumulative distribution function. So for this, what we're going to do is we're going to let z equal to x minus mu over sigma. In other words, I'm going to look at this exponent here, and I'm going to make this equal to z. So we have this uh, equal to z. Uh, and we say that z is in standard units. Uh, so don't worry about this too much. Um, it basically just means that we're talking about a certain term, this, uh, this fact. So basically, this terminology is coming from really when uh, mu is equal to 0 and sigma is equal to 1. Then we get z is equal to x. So we just say z is equal to standard units uh, because we're kind of forgetting about the mu and we're forgetting about the sigma. We're just looking at... Um, our distribution without these things. We're kind of forgetting about them. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to let phi of x, so capital phi of x, we're going to say that this is um, the probability of everything to the left of z. So we look at everything to the left of z, uh, the, the area under the curve, and that gives us our function phi. Um, in other words, this gives us what's called the standard normal cumulative, cumulative distributive function. Um, let's actually look at this. Basically, what the formula we have is phi of z. Um, actually, yeah, let's look at this. So basically, what we're doing is I take my normal curve here. right? So here I have mu in the center. I pick some point z. Um, and I'm going to look at the area under the curve to the left of it. So I look at this whole area. This is what we're going to call phi of z. Now this, this uh, curve actually is going to have its own function as well. So this f phi of z is basically going to be, ah, uh, is going to be defined as the integral from minus infinity to z, right? We're taking, we're going all the way from the left coming toward, I guess I should go this way, all the way from the left coming for to the peak here, to the z, and we're going to use our formula. So here we have uh, 1 over um, square root of 2 pi e to the minus 1 half x squared dx. So notice how because we're in standard units, we're assuming mu is equal to 0 and sigma is equal to 1. This is why the sigma here disappeared, the mu disappeared, etc. So this basically gives us this uh, function. And this function, if you look at it over time, is going to give us this kind of curve here, this little blue curve um, here. Notice how this part is 1 half when we're at 0. So when we're in the middle, right, in the middle, I should have half of the area. Because remember, the area in total is equal to 1. So in reality, up here, this is 1. So I guess I should do this in black. This is 1. This is 1 half. Because the area under the curve is equal to 1. So we basically have this function over time. Now this function here inside 2 pi, we're going to call a minus 1 half x squared. This is known as the standard normal distribution. Um, right? So we saw this already right? When we talked about uh, the standard normal distribution up here, right? We take the normal distribution, we let mu is equal to 0, sigma equal to 1. That gives us a standard normal distribution. Uh, now, what we have is for a normal distribution, then, 
if I have two different probabilities and I want to figure out the value between them or the, the interval. So I have, say I want to figure out the distance, I want to know the probability of being here. What's the probability of being between B and A? Uh, I guess I should do A here and B here. Well, what we can do is we can look at, um, what we can do is we can look at phi, uh, we can look at phi of B, so I can look at everything to the other way, to the left of B, and then we can look at A and remove everything to the left of A. So I can remove everything to the left of A, and that gives me this area here. Now the problem is, remember that everything was in standard units. So what we really want is we need to correct that factor. So when we have a normal distribution, the probability between being A, between A and B is really going to be given by phi of B minus mu over sigma. So here's the correcting factor kind of bringing back in our expected value and standard deviation. And we're going to remove everything to the left of A. Um, and so what you're going to notice is that we have this thing, right? Uh, so this is basically how we calculate this. Now, so you might be like, oh shit, I have to sit here and calculate this integral. And so some of you might be worried, especially those who are currently taking calculus. Um, I'm going to give you a little spoiler. So spoiler alert, uh, skip over the next 20 seconds or something of the video if you don't want to spoil your calculus class. But it turns out this function, e to the minus one half x, does not have a simple indefinite integral. In other words, there's no simple formula for phi of z. So what this means is there's no exact formula, right? So, but we do know methods of calculating it. Uh, I'm not expecting you to know how to calculate this, um, but the book has, if you look at appendix five, uh, it has a ton of different values. Um, so don't worry about it. If you are in a pinch and you want to calculate it by hand or by calculator, there is this formula that approximates it. I personally, I just use the appendix at the end of the book because I find it easier to kind of work it that way. Uh, but you can use this formula if you really want or if like some of your classes are requiring a formula, this is a good approximation. It gives you up to three significant digits. So you get up to three significant digits for every Z greater than or equal to zero, which is not too bad. Um, so yeah, so I'll pause it here. Uh, yeah, we'll stop the video here. And then in the next video, we'll look at this function a little more, see what we can do with it, um, etc. So thank you.